Hello everybody, Matteo here again and I welcome you in my little RC garage to the next build steps of the new Tamiya CCO2 Mercedes-Benz G500. The chassis is done and the next step is 37, the preparation of radio and electronics. I've already created a new car on my Futeba 4PL, as you can see named as CCO2. And I'm going to use this to sell LiPo with 4500 milliamps from Swaytronic. The servo I'll use is this HS5646WP from Hitech. It's not new, I had it already in another car. This servo is waterproof. The Electronic Speed Controller TBLE02 from Tamiya is included in the kit. But this CSC has no drag brake or hill brake, something very important for a trail truck or scale crawler like the CCO2. And I have chosen the low gear ratio when building the gearbox. So I absolutely need a drag brake. I've decided to use this quick run WP1080 from Hobbywing. This ESC is especially designed for crawlers, has a programmable hill brake and it's waterproof. Another advantage compared to the stock ESC. Here the speed controller is unboxed and it comes with XC60 connector. But on my 2S LiPo I have Tamiya plugs. But on my 3S LiPos I have also XC60 connectors. So why not use this 3S LiPo instead of the 2S? The ESC can handle the 3S voltage. But I like to check if the battery compartment is large enough to fit the 3S LiPo. Yes, it looks good. Also the silver can should be able to handle this plus of voltage. Especially because I used a low gear ratio. So I will go with this 3S setup. As first I have to solder the motor cables from the original ESC to the Hobbywing ESC. So this is done and I have everything connected to the receiver and battery. The servo works and also the speed controller. Next I have to build the servo saver for the steering servo. To add the second metal ring can be hard, it's helpful to use a tool like a screwdriver. Here on this ball head I use a bit of treadlock to be sure not to lose this part. Now I can screw on this to the servo. It's important to have the servo in neutral position to get the proper orientation of the servo arm. To find the correct screw for your servo, this chart in the manual can be helpful. Step 38 is the installation of the steering servo and side plates on the chassis. The servo is secured with two screws. And the steering linkage can be connected via this ball head. And this is the side plate. Here you can see the steering servo and side plates are installed. Step 39 is the installation of the receiver and ESC on the chassis. The ESC is fixed by double-sided tape on the chassis. The manual recommends using two layers of them. 
and so I fix it on the chassis. Also for the on-off switch, I use double-sided tape and install it on the chassis. The receiver is installed in a small box to protect it against dirt and water. And this box is fixed on the chassis also by double-sided tape. In step 40 we have to make a proper cable arrangement. As first I connect the motor cables and then using zip ties to keep the cables in place. Here you can see the result. Now it's time to connect the battery and turn on this thing to check if everything works. Steering works well, and also the speed controller and motor works and everything turns in the right direction. Step 41 is the installation of the front bumper and rear end of the chassis. First I have to build the front bumper. Here again, nuts have to be inserted. And then screw on the bumper on the chassis. On the rear end, two ball heads have to be screwed on. For this, I use a bit of dreadlock. This part has not to be screwed on. It holds only by this flexible part here. This makes it possible to install the battery also from the back side. Step 42 is the preparation and installation of the tires on the rims. The manual says to not glue on the tires. I don't know why. Someone has any idea? Maybe because the tire is so hard. This makes it not necessary to glue it on. It holds by its hardness. Can you hear how hard the tires are? Unfortunately, the tires have the same hard rubber compound as on the old CC01 tires. They are way too hard. These are not usable for trailing, in my opinion. So I decided to go with these tires from MST. I use them without foams and these are much, much softer. Now I install the tires on the rims. As you can see, these have nearly the same size as the original tires, but the rubber compound is much softer and the performance on the trails will be much better. These tires have to be glued on and for this I use this tire glue from Sweep. This small needle is very helpful to glue on tires. Be careful not to apply too much glue, do not soil the wheels. Especially on the front side, you have to be very carefully and patiently, otherwise it can happen that the wheel looks ugly after soiling with glue. As of the last thing, I like to cover these breader holes on the wheels. For this, I use clear tape. This helps to keep the water out of the tires. Here are the wheels finished. Step 43 is the installation of the wheels on the chassis. First in front, insert the bearing, the pin, 
then the 12mm wheel hex and then screw on the wheel and here I do the same at the rear axle Finally, the wheels are installed also. Step 44 is the installation of the battery. The battery compartment is large enough to apply a few self-adhesive rubber bands to protect the battery. As you can see, it fits perfect. Even it's a 3S 4000 mAh battery. Step 45 is the installation of the body posts. Screw them on and install the strut to reinforce the rear holders. I let them long at the moment and will it shorten after the body is finished. Now the chassis is ready to roll. The next step is the body. Soon I'll start with this work and show you this in the next video of this build series. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you soon.